Hey, it's Jake Mace with jakemace.com. Here are five street fighting kung fu moves everybody should know. If you want a video that shows the moves in full speed and slow-mo, there's a link above in the upper right-hand corner or down below in the description or comments, and that video has them with no talking. But I thought a lot of you guys out there in YouTube land would want to see how the moves are done so that you guys can learn them at home. I'm gonna show you just these five different combinations from Chinese Gong Fu. If there are any skills within those combinations that are above and beyond the move, I will put other videos that are appropriate to teach you down below in the comments and description. Let's go to the first move right now. Before we get started, hit the like button for me. Thumbs up and check me out on Instagram at Jake Mace Tai Chi and on Snapchat at Jake Mace Tai Chi or my online school at jakemace.com. In Chinese Gong Fu, there are many empty hand styles, weapon styles, animal styles, and internal styles. And so say thank you down below to my friend Nathan who came in to help me out with the application today. This move incorporates a technique from snake style and from mantis style, two of the animal styles. I start this move from a nice strong stance, rooting my legs to the ground. When my opponent goes in to right hook toward my head, I stop it right here. Do it again. Stop it. Very little arm motion, use the forearm. And make sure you turn the body a little bit. Now at the same time, I'm gonna use this snake hand, the V part of my hand right here, to stun him right in the neck. And the goal is to hurt the neck, but also to shake his brain and cause a knockout. If they're strong enough, they can take the neck shot. So we wanna shake his brain. The hook comes in, lock it, stun the neck. The second hook comes in, duck it, elevation change. And while I'm down here, both my fists together with palms facing each other, hit him right in the midsection. Right inside there. Again, first punch comes in, block it, hit the neck. Second punch comes in, duck it, elevation change, strike right into the body. One more time, hit, duck it, hit to the body. Okay, one, two combination. One, two, body. Again, one, two, body. Again, one, two, body, as hard as you can. One, two, body. Let's show it one time in full speed and slow-mo. Second move is a common technique done in almost every fighting system of Chinese Gong Fu, and it's the side kick. I love the side kick so much. It's a very powerful kick, and it's hard to block. Because it's hard to block a kick that's coming straight at you. Right? I think front kicks and round kicks are easier to block. So the side kick comes straight in and is a hard one to block, especially if it's done with that spin. So spinning side kick is one of my favorite techniques to implement in the fight from any Chinese system of martial arts. And I got my man Andrew here to help me with this one. Thanks for having me back. Thank you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to fake before I kick. And that's the key is all the fakes. Sometimes in fighting, just your eyeballs can make you 10% better than your opponent if you're good at directing them somewhere with your body language. As we're about to fight, I'm gonna bring the hands up, try to raise him up and make him think I'm going for his face. As soon as he raises up, I spinning side kick right to the body. So you guys can get with your partner in your school and do this about 10 times, each person. Get used to the timing that it takes to raise up and then go for it. And that's the proper timing right there. Hit, go. And then just get about three in a row. Pa. Again, pa. again. And then once you get it down and your accuracy is pretty good, then work on the proper timing and cadence because timing is everything. So instead of it going fake, stop, turn, and hit, I want you to do the fake and spin all together so that as soon as his arms are up, that kick is stunning him right in the body and knocking his air out. Again, lift, go, and hit. Lift and hit. One more time. Pa! One more. Oh. Let's show you guys once in full speed and slow-mo. Thank you. Oh. Third move you have to be proficient in is being able to take the shot, not just in the brain but also in the neck. The soft parts of your body have to turn hard. In Chinese Gong Fu, every finger must be a dagger, every arm must be a spear, and the entire body must be a lethal weapon, not only for offense but for defense as well. So if my friend Andrew here has the snake hand, he's gonna make that thing hard. He's gonna give me one shot to the neck, and he's gonna go, Jake, can you take it? Can you take it? I can take that one. All right. Then a second shot. Good, and I got that one. So when you're playing with your partner, do one at a time and start slow and build it up over time. Don't obliterate your friend on the first day, okay? So a third shot comes in. Good, I got that one. The fourth one. And I'm learning how to strengthen my neck. Good, 
And now, hopefully, when my chin is dropped and my hands are up, I'll have even more power to defend against those next shots because that right there is a worst case scenario. Okay, train the neck to become as hard as the arm and you'll be a better fighter, especially for the defense. Next, we're gonna utilize a little bit of monkey style Kung Fu, which is known for its takedowns and agility. When Nate comes in for that hook punch, I'm gonna keep a good, strong, rooted leg position and use both of my arms to block the punch. Again, this side. Immediately after that, before his second hand goes to hit me, I hit him with the back fist in the neck or the ear or the jaw. Once I hit him, again, immediately get around the neck and trap him down this way, as if you're gonna choke him out, but we don't wanna choke him out. Instead, we use our body weight, sandwich him down, and lock my hands together like this, one behind the leg, one over top of his neck. You guys see how my lock is? Check out this lock. A monkey hook right here, hooking it right there. And then I'm gonna make his lips kiss his knee. Okay, and once he does that, I'm gonna roll him back, keep this lock tight, and roll him over. And I'm gonna keep rolling through on top so that I stay in the superior position. Now, if we were in jujitsu or in the UFC or we were competing, I might wanna keep going to win the match. But on the street, I don't wanna get stuck down there. So as soon as I'm on top and I'm safe, I leave him there and I take off. Same move, again on this side a little bit smoother. The punch comes in, block it, hit to the head. Over the top and get his head deep in my armpit. This is not gonna cut it. This is what I want. I want him to feel like a football player hitting him with that tackle. Sandwich him down, make his lips kiss his knee, and get that monkey hook. Now, monkey back roll, end up on top, push away, create separation, and get out of there. Down, sandwich, lock, go back, over the top. Final technique here today, I'm not gonna wait until he attacks me. I could tell I couldn't escape, the fight is imminent. I'm gonna go for that knee trap right there just to soften him up, a little bit of a knee trap. We find this all the time in crane style kung fu, it's very common and in tiger style. The knee trap can be high, it can be low to the shin, or it can be right up onto the hip. Any location is fine. The goal is to hit him hard enough so he remembers us, but it's also a setup for the real move, which is gonna be knee trap, raise up, his hands come up, and then flying scissor, coming in, take him down with the legs. We call it a scissor sweep, it's also called a scissor kick takedown. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do the scissor kick right now or the scissor sweep, because I have tons of YouTube videos already showing it. So down below in the comments, down below in the description of this video, there will be one, two, or three, or four links of other videos I've done when I was much younger that show you guys the technique of how to land effectively the scissor kick takedown or scissor sweep. So one more time, as we're engaged in combat, go for the knee trap, soften him up. Raise the hands up, make him think I'm going for the head, which opens up his entire body. Get in there, one leg across the top of that hook kick. I'm always courteous and I hold the head for you, the people that I like. Mm -hmm. The other leg goes behind both knees and then traps him down to the ground. Now immediately, I'm gonna try to push away and get out of there and free myself. I wanna thank Andrew. Thanks for having me. First time on my YouTube channel. Always thank Nathan down in the comments below. And now you guys have these five techniques in your arsenal. Practice them every single day. I wanna see you and your classmates doing these before class begins and after class ends at least five times each. If you wanna follow me on social media, Jake Mace Tai Chi on Instagram and Snapchat, my online school and DVDs at jakemace.com. We're gonna cut right now and fade out and show you all five moves together back to back to back to back to back in regular speed and slow-mo. Thanks guys. Oh. 
Thank you.